Ah, the old Aprigliano house on Collington. A lot of my days were spent there. In fact, all of my days were spent there, living the dream of an internet reviewer. There I am now, churning out scripts like nobody's business. Though, I seem to have lost my touch. Maybe they weren't original enough? Maybe they were too original. All I know is, they were- <laughs> What are you laughing at? Maybe Little Thulu was right. I needed an edge. I needed something different, something no critic had before. And I think I had that edge. I went back to my room, turned on my camera, put the Cuban cigar in my mouth, and began some unfinished business. <laughs> Greetings, viewers, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Machinimist. Let's talk about a little genre known as the noir. The noir is a film genre which takes its visual inspiration from the German Expressionism movements of the 1910s and 20s, and its literary inspiration from the works of Dashiell Hammett and James M. Cain. The genre is often identified with a visual style unconventional within a Hollywood context that emphasizes low-key lighting and unbalanced compositions. Films commonly identified as noir evidence, a variety of visual approaches including ones that fit comfortably within the Hollywood mainstream. Film noirs also embrace a variety of genres, from the gangster film to the police procedural to the social problem picture. Any example of which from the 1940s and 50s now seen as noir's classic era was likely to be described as melodrama at the time. Now you may be asking why I've gone all hard of gaming on you guys. Well, back in the fall of 2008, Harrison Nefarious Guy Heller, creator of Machinima with Officer Dan, wrote and directed a short Machinima and Gary's Mod which encompasses that 1940s gangster feel. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So, fellas and dames, I present to you today's review. This is the stuff that dreams are made out of and 5,000 other Humphrey Bogart quotes. Anyway, we're going to be looking at clockwork today. Clockwork is about a man named Frank Sorelli who joins the Marchesa Crime Syndicate, which is run out of Paul Visconti's Italian restaurant where Frank even says, There you could get anything you wanted. Drinks, drugs, and broads. Anything you could think of. Paul Visconti could cook it up for you. He partners with Vinny the Gun Moretti, Don Marchesa's favorite hitman. After he is given an order to take out Paul due to late payments, he decides to leave this life of murder. He also learns that unfortunately the mob isn't willing to let him go without a fight. Once a part of the family, always a part of the family. You don't have a choice. I have to say, Clockwork has a pretty solid script. Frank's narration is goddamn awesome. It reminds me something out of Goodfellas. Now, some of you may be asking, why is it called Clockwork? Well, it's briefly explained in the opening narration. A man by the name of Jimmy Laszlo was killed in the old clock tower on Maple Street, and apparently his blood clogged up the gears causing the clock to stop working. According to Frank, since then the clock tower has become a place to settle unfinished business. I guess you could consider it a clever name. I mean, hell, if they called it Mafia Guys Do Stuff at a Clock Tower, it would still make sense. Well, sans all the gay porn vibes, but still it would sound like a cool name. <coughs> what? You know that sounds like some back-of-the-shelf gay porn that the creepy guy with the trench coat and the perv stash comes in to rent? Moving on, the only real complaint I have about the film is it seems like the writer does not really know subtlety if it hit him upside the head. What do I mean? Well, there's a scene in the film where Frank is having issues going to sleep. So he goes to Visconti's where Paul gives him something that will help him sleep. And it does help, but it also causes this to happen. Frank, why? Why did you kill us, Frank? Your scars run deep past the flesh deep down into the darkest corners of your soul to the place that makes you human. 
It's dying. And it's a very precious thing, Frank. Very precious. Without it, you're just an animal. Wild and vicious. So answer me. Why? Why did you do it? Answer me. I hate to say it, but the scene is a bit over the top, and it seems like the writer shoehorned in a message of murder is bad and these people will be on your conscience forever, lol. But other than that, the writing is pretty goddamn good. The cinematography in Clockwork is really good. The black and white effect works really well for this Gary's Mod Machinima emulating the noir style. Not gonna lie, this actually did surprise me. It's almost like when you're watching Akira and you say to yourself, Jesus, this is absolutely amazing, look at the visuals! And then you realize it was made in 1989. I love some of the shots that were used in this video. Very artistic and very well done. The only thing in Clockwork I really have an issue with cinematography-wise is some of the facial reactions and character movements. Let's take this face as an example. It really does not help the narrator's case in trying to convince you that this guy is an artist with a Tommy gun. It was then that I met Vinny. Vinny the Gun Moretti. Welcome to the family, Frank. He was the most gifted man with a Tommy gun. <laughs> Other than that, the last real compliment I have to give is the set pieces are amazing. From the clock tower to Visconti's restaurant, everything seems to look in place for a 40s noir period piece. So overall, the film's cinematography is pretty surprising for a Gary's Mod machinima. Well done! Well done! The cast of Clockwork consists of Phil Rice as Frank Sorelli, Richard Grove as Vinny the <laughs> Moretti, and C.J. Ambrosia playing Paul Visconti and Don Marchesa. How do they do? Well, let's break this down cast member by cast member. Phil Rice does a pretty solid job as Frank. You can really sense the guilt that Frank is carrying on his shoulders, while at the same time you can sense the confidence in his voice when he is getting ready to solve some unfinished business and get shit done. However, Richard Grove seems like he pulled a half-hearted job here. I mean, at points it sounds good, but, well... Frank, we'll come looking for you, Frank. You'll bet we will. The Don's not gonna let this go. And we'll come after your family, one by one. Bang, bang. <laughs> Anybody see the problem with his voice? I mean, it just sounds like he was called up on Skype and told he needed to record lines as soon as possible. And believe me, guys, this actually happened a lot when making Machinima. Um, I, mean, I apologize, guys. One second. Um, hello? Hey, Smartsky. No, no, no time to explain. I, I'm kind of pressed for time. I need you to record some dialogue for me. Can you do an accent of an old British woman? Wait. Dialogue? Wait, what do you mean? Thanks, buddy. You're the best. Well, anyway, let's finish this review by talking about CJ Ambrosia, who I plan to have tea and crumpets with. Bollocks! Now, C.J. Ambrosia, as I mentioned prior, had the responsibility of playing two parts, Don Marchesa and Paul Visconti. How does he hold up as both? Well, C.J. does a very good job. He's able to pull off both a stern but nonchalant Don of a crime family, and a restaurant owner who is actually one of the best narcotics dealers in the area. Once a part of this family, always a part of this family. I don't pay you to ask questions. Take it easy, Frank. Take it easy. Come around back. I got just the thing. He's able to really make the pitch changes seamless. Granted, he doesn't get a lot of lines to work with, but still he did a good job with what he was given. Now, in my opinion, that's mainly a fault of the writing, but overall the voice acting is really good. So, now that we've broken things down, we need to put things back together in our final evaluation. Thoughts? Clockwork is one of the few noir machinimas out there that actually respects the genre as well as puts its own twist on things. The writing is solid, the cinematography is surprisingly well done for its time, and the voice acting is really good. Seriously, do yourself a favor and check this one out. If you are a fan of the noir genre, you will love what you are about to see. That was it. Another review over, another story finished. I knew there was no turning back from what was coming next. I had to face my demons head on like a bull in his last fight in Spain. <laughs> This is Smarty signing off. Next time, the one year anniversary of the Machinimist. Ow!
fuck? Why do I keep putting that in my mouth? 